Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the wonderful world of geometry. Today we are starting Chapter 7, which is all about right triangles and trigonometry. Today, specifically, we're taking notes on Sections 1 and 2, which are all about the Pythagorean Theorem. First, we'll look at what we're going to be doing. First, we're going to find side lengths using the Pythagorean Theorem. That we've already done before, so we're just going to do a quick review. And then we're also going to use side lengths to classify triangles. For the ACT, you have to know the Pythagorean Theorem, and you have to know how to work with squares and square roots of numbers, which are, we will also review today. First, I just want to apologize for the kind of double text. I know it's a little trippy, but hopefully we can get through it. Okay, so first we're going to focus on using the Pythagorean Theorem. So here's our Pythagorean Theorem. That right there is a picture of Mr. Pythagoras himself. Okay, Pythagorean Theorem, I think most of you know this, A squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Write yourself a note. This is only for right triangles. So this theorem is only used for right triangles. It doesn't make sense to use this formula if the triangles are not right. Also important, the c squared is always the hypotenuse. So if we draw ourselves a right triangle, across from the right angle is the side C, the hypotenuse. Those other two sides are the legs. We label them A and B. Doesn't matter which one you label which. So these are the legs. Because we've already done a few examples like this, um, in previous weeks we are not going to do one together. Here are the two examples you have. Pause the video, try both examples, and then come back when you're ready. Okay, welcome back. We're going to do the first one together. So we have our a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. What's important is that you identify the hypotenuse, which is that x. So x goes in for the c squared. a and b then are 5 and 10. So we have 5 squared add 10 squared. 5 squared is 25, 10 squared is 100. Okay, so we end up with x squared is equal to 125. We don't want x squared though, we want x. So if x squared is equal to 125, we get rid of the square by taking the square root. Now to simplify the square root of 125, we need to look for the biggest perfect squares. The biggest perfect square that goes into 125 is 25. That's 25 multiplied by 5. Please make sure you keep the 25 and the 5 under the square roots. Square root of 25 is just 5. The square root of 5 we cannot simplify. So x is equal to 5 square root 5 centimeters. Sorry for forgetting the units. Okay, second one. This one was tricky. This one is not possible. That's because it's not a right triangle. It looks right, but because we don't have the right angle marked, can't do the problem. Okay. I have one more Pythagorean theorem example for us, and then we're going to move on to classifying triangles. So this example says, find the area of an isosceles triangle with sides 13 feet and a base of 10 feet. So first let's draw ourselves a figure. Okay, isosceles triangle. Go back in your memory. Hopefully you remember that means that the triangle has two congruent sides. Those are the sides that are 13 feet and 13 feet. Okay, and then it says a base of 10. The base is the side that is not congruent. Okay, so find the area. Remember that the area of a triangle is one half base multiplied by height. In this case, the base is 10. Do not be fooled, the height is not 13. The height is this segment right here. Remember that the height is always perpendicular to the base. Okay, so we need to figure out what that height is. Because the base is 10, it's split into five and five. We need to know the height. As you will notice, we now have this right triangle here, so we can use the Pythagorean Theorem. 
We have a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. A and B are the two legs, which in this case are H and 5. C squared, the hypotenuse, because it's across from the right angle, is 13. 5 squared is 25. 13 squared is 169. Subtracting 169, we get H squared is equal to 144. Take the square root. Hopefully we all know that the square root of 144 is 12. So that means this height is 12. Going back to our area, we now can substitute 12 in for the height. Half of 10 is 5. Multiply that by 12, and you get 60. So our area is 60 feet squared. Don't forget the units. Okay, so that was a little bit new, but that was just applying the Pythagorean theorem, which you guys already know. Okay, moving on. Now we're going to classify triangles. So this is using the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. Just to review before we start classifying, is it possible to form a triangle with side lengths of 1, 2, and 3? Remember that in order to form a triangle, any two sides added together should be greater than the third side. So is it true that 1 add 2 is greater than 3? No. So this is not a triangle. Remember that you need to check all three normally, so we would do 2 add 3 is greater than 1. Yes, that's true. Um, 1 add 3 is greater than 2. Yes, it's true. But because we have this 1 that is not true, this is not a triangle. We're going to need that in a minute. Okay, so right now, draw yourself this table. If I get moving too quickly, you might want to pause the video. Okay. So Pythagorean theorem, we already learned. That's going to go in our table. So one possibility is that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Remember that this theorem is only used for right triangles. So when a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, we have a right triangle. We're going to draw ourselves a picture of that right triangle. Remember, a and b are the legs. And c is the hypotenuse, the largest side. Okay, so again, we have a squared plus b squared. We have c squared. This time, maybe they're not equal. This time, c squared is bigger. So we took this triangle that we have over here, this one, and we made c bigger. If we make c bigger, what happens to that right angle? Let's see. So we made c bigger. That angle now becomes obtuse. So that's for an obtuse triangle. Last case is if, is, if, is if a squared plus b squared is greater than c squared. So this time we took our right triangle, but we made c smaller. If we make c smaller, that right angle becomes smaller. And it becomes acute. OK, just a little note to write yourself. C is always the largest side, or the longest side. OK, so we're going to do one example together. You're going to do one on your own. And then we are finished with notes. OK, here's the example that we're going to do together. It says, show that the following side lengths form a triangle, then classify the triangle. So first thing that we're going to notice is we have square root of 62. I'm not a big fan of that number, and I'm going to bet that you all are not a big fan of that number. So I'm going to change that to a decimal. Square root of 62 is about 7.87. So first let's check, is it a triangle? Is 5 add 7.87 greater than 6? Yes. 5 add 6 greater than 7.87? Yes, that's 11 greater than 7.87, and then 6 add 7.87 greater than 5. Yes. So yes, this is a triangle. Now we have to compute the a squared plus b squared and the c squared. Remember that c is always the largest side, which in this case is that root 62. Okay, so we have root 62, and I want to square that. 
I'm using the root because a square root and squaring are inverse operations. They undo each other. So we're left with just 62. A squared plus B squared then is 5 squared. Add 6 squared, so 25 add 36, which ends up being 61. So we have found that A squared plus B squared is less than C squared, because 62 is greater. If we made C bigger, we made our hypotenuse bigger, we ended up with an obtuse triangle. Okay, moving on, last example. Pause the video here, show that these sides form a triangle, and then classify the triangle. Welcome back. Hopefully you took a chance to try this one on your own. You should have shown that this was a triangle. You should have shown this by showing each pair their sum is greater than the third side. Here's two of them. I'm not going to do the third pair. Then you should have done the a squared plus b squared and the c squared. c is the largest side, which in this case is 6.1 squared which ends up being 37.21. A squared plus B squared was 4.3 squared add 5.2 squared, which in this case is 45.53. So here we saw that A squared plus B squared is greater than C squared this time. So this time we took the hypotenuse, we took C and we made it smaller. If our right angle gets smaller, it becomes acute. So these sides describe an acute triangle. Hopefully you got that one right. Just to look back at what we did today, we reviewed the Pythagorean theorem, including working with squares and square roots of numbers, and then we classified triangles. When you come into class, we'll be working on the homework. Have a nice day. Bye.